This is Record Royale, where we throw two albums into the ring with one another and see which one comes out on top. Ice cream treat did I just have after dinner? What's that? It's a Milo cup. <laughs> nah, nah. My scoop shake. Damn, that is a Will St. Clair. That is a Will St. Clair. Uh, I'm gonna say sure, so- something just like super cheeky. I'm gonna say like a little ice cream sandwich or oh, something. Yeah. Or something like that. <laughs> Maxi Bond? <laughs> what's, an ice, what's an ice cream sanger? Uh, Adam, Maxi you wanna Bond? have a guess? Nah, yeah, no bites of no Maxi Bond. Um, <laughs> it was a Bubble O Bill. Oh. Oh, classic. Nice. Yeah, did you, man. Classic. Did you chuck the gum out? I, I swallowed it. I actually swallowed it. <laughs> I was like a bit scared. I was really scared. Yeah, good oh, luck. Shit. Good luck waking you know up. Where, you don't know where that has yeah, been. Yeah, I, I went crazy. down my throat and I was like, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that did not need, mean, mean to happen. I can. You're a bit of a wimp if you don't attack the. Uh, the bubble gum in the middle, though. You got to go yeah. for you gotta it. You've got to have a couple of bites. It doesn't last very long. Yeah, it's pretty gross, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's the genius who thought of that? Let's chuck a piece of bubble gum in the middle of his ice cream. Mm. Bill. Mr. Bill. It's great. Yeah, it was yeah. Bill. <laughs> Bill Bubble. <laughs> Bill Bubble. Friend of the pod, Bill Bubble. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, Brad, you know what I was thinking about the other day? What's um, that? We haven't mentioned it on the pod. Well, I don't think we've mentioned it on the pod yet. Uh, bad the bad the bad band names, uh, kind of series on Twitter. The saga, yeah, yeah, it w- which has been going for about five years and will probably never end. <laughs> um, for everyone who no. doesn't know what this is, which is pretty much everyone, me, my myself, Brad, and a bunch of our mates. Every time, and, and Adam, I think Adam's uh, joined in <laughs> like on this two before. times. Yeah, I'm yeah. Here. <laughs> Every time you think or you hear something that would be a terrible band name, you just got to tweet it and you say ba- uh, band name, <laughs> colon, uh, and then said said the band. band name. Now, Brad, yeah. what is your all-time favorite of the bad band names? I already know what it is. Uh, there's a couple. I like base them off what everyone else thinks as well, and it's not what I think. If I were to start a band, <laughs> one of them would be um, it was it was Monica Veronica, <laughs> <laughs> and that like that is such a good band name. If I saw like a rock outfit called Monica Veronica, you know, that'd be good. But all time favourite, probably got to be the New Zealand, I'd say. Yeah. The, the <laughs> New Zealand. The New Zealand. That's oh heaps deep. Oh, it's so funny. I'd watch them at the Cambo for 10 bucks. Like a... Yeah. For sure. Yeah. My all time favourite that I've done was... <laughs> um, you, you know the band? I can't remember what... The, is it something O Captain Chunk? Is it Chunk O Captain? Oh, um... Chuck, God, fans of this band just <laughs> are killing us right yeah. now. Anyway, uh, mine, mine is um, <laughs> honey exclamation mark. Where is my super suit exclamation mark? <laughs> that's deep <laughs> yeah. from uh, the Incredibles. Yeah. That's good. That's I'd a, also yeah. watch them. <laughs> that's a super twinkly emo band. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got a lot of crazy riffs. Yeah. Uh, speaking of riffs, damn, see. nailed the segue again. Uh, Smith Street <laughs> Band and Modern Baseball on the pod this week. Man, oh, these two, yeah. uh, throw me, sorry, I should mention what their names are. <laughs> throw Me in the River by Smith Street Band and You're Gonna Miss It All by Modern Baseball. These two albums both came out in 2014. I'll tell you what, very pivotal time in my life in terms of uh, mm. discovering and finding new music. Um, yeah, me I don't know about you guys, sure. but I reckon especially mainly Modern Baseball, but Smith Street Band in a different way, definitely kind of changed the way I viewed enjoying music, if that kind of makes mm. sense. Like, it was more of a community thing. Like, all of our mates loved modern baseball, and that made me want to listen to them more. And I just ended up just loving them so much. They were, like, my favorite band. Um, Brad, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Well, the Smith Street Band, the first band you saw live when you turned 18? (laughs) I saw... I think I saw the Dune Rats before. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) At the cave. Hell yeah. But... um, (laughs) That was, I think, it was my second gig, like gig, gig, like a local gig ever. Yeah. It was during, it was for this album as well. I'm for, was it for this album? No. Oh yeah, it would have been. No. It could have been. I 2015, think so. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It was like I was still at school. I think it was on a Thursday night. It was a school night because you came and you were washed yeah. up the next day. I was like, man, I'm so yeah. jealous. I'm not 18 <laughs> yet. Yeah. Yeah. Was exactly. That? Yeah. So it must have been between May and July. Was yeah. that pre the Trophy Eyes show 
that you went to and got called out in the audience? Oh, that's yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't talk about. Wait, that. Tell the story. Tell the story now. Oh, tell no. it now in in no. detail. Otherwise, okay. I will, and okay. I wasn't even there. Okay, so um, my my good mate Dom, he has an older brother who played in kind of like a hardcore band. They were called You and Color. They still rock today. Yeah, everyone go check Shout them out. out. They supported Trophy Eyes at their, I think it was their Mend Move On album launch. And I didn't know any trophy eyes at all. It was a sold out Cambo show. It was a home show. Packed house, 800 plus. And we're up the, pretty, pretty close to the front. And uh, what's the singer's name? John from Trophy Eyes, if he's listening. Yo, what up? Um, he put the mic in my face and told me what song do I want to hear. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know any music. And... It all happened so fast and I cooked it supremely. And he was like, well, I know. Well, none of that. Let's keep going. <laughs> How and old were you? You're uh, only like, what, 16? 15, 16. Yeah. That's that is so, and I, so I can't funny. believe you pointed me out like that. That might be you my probably, favorite. I can Brad, even remember that. Might be my favorite Brad story <laughs> of them all. Yeah. Just have, not knowing what to do <laughs> and shoving a mic in my face. That's at so, the, that at the very front me. of, I'm sure, what yeah. would have been a chaotic Trophy Eyes show as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. It was so good. Got me so in there. So funny. For sure. So, so Heat funny. funny. Yeah, anyway, let's not talk about that. <laughs> Brad, did you come did you come with us to Sydney to see Modern Baseball? Absolutely. That's like I've got this down here. That's one of my favourite shows. Yeah. Period. We got the train? We got the train. We got the train. Now we're gonna tell the story about Squid. One of our mates. <laughs> he so we so uh, we're in Newcastle, the show is in Sydney, so we got the train uh, down there. Probably the, it was like the afternoon and we uh, like went to a pub, had a few beers, but our mate was working. So we had to get a later train. So he got really pissed on the train, got to Central Station, <laughs> didn't know what to do with his bag. So he threw it in a tree and was like, I'll get this when I, we get the train home. And then he walks to, walks to Oxford Art Factory, didn't have a ticket, couldn't get in. And then somehow he got in it was the biggest brothers moment ever when he got in and, were, and modern baseball it was seconds just started before playing started to play did yeah. he get his yeah. back he just started just playing no oh yeah when we went back to the station he was like i left it right there didn't get his bag <laughs> his car keys in as well <laughs> that's awesome Love it, sweet, but that, that's just crazy. one of the reasons that's just another reason why that gig was like the oh, best yeah. <laughs> such a fun modern baseball gig because we were only, they played yeah we like they played so many well. songs yeah. off this album. I checked up the set list today. Oh my god. It is an all time set list. Shout out to Setlist FM. Another yeah. <laughs> to be sponsor of the show. What what year was this? Um fine, 2016. This, this was 2016, 2016, just before they released Holy Ghost. Um, so um, they toured yeah. like a month before that album came out, which was kind of weird. True. True. But I think yeah. they cancelled a show and they that and they're coming back. Oh yeah, they did too. Because they were gonna play with yeah. the Smith Street band in 2015 yeah. at the I Love Life shows. There you go. There's a little link. But uh, yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. I'll, see, I'll roll out this set list. Fine, great. Broken Casper Shear, Tears Over Beers, Apartment, Rock Bottom, Going to Bed Now, Old Ghetto Gospel Choir, a couple of others. That is like the best mm. start to a show. I think we like all our lungs were gone. <laughs> yeah. Like four, four songs through the set. And Oxford Art Factory is a notorious, very sweaty little room. Mm. Gotcha. And it, it was uh, no different that night. That's um, mm. yeah, man, that was fun. But that's so good. I'm so stoked we're doing these albums. Actually, they kind of just came about out of nowhere, last kind of week. Like shout that. out Gribs. Yeah, he had the idea. He gave it to me. Yeah, really good. Um, yeah. I'm very happy. It was, it's been an enjoyable week because um, just being able to listen to these. And when we do albums that I know well, I find so many different things that I've never noticed in the albums. Just two really quick examples. Modern Baseball's Harmonies and Smith Street Band is so fat. Yeah. Did not realise how <laughs> fat the guitars were. The guitars were. are crazy, hey. But uh, yeah. we'll get into that. Let's uh, smash through these uh, little details of these bad boys. Uh, let's do Modern Baseball first. So they're from... They're actually... Uh, it's Jake and Brennan. They're originally from Maryland. Uh, I think that's Virginia. I hope. American listeners. And, uh, but they moved to Philly, Philadelphia for college. And uh, that's, that's kind of where they're from, pretty much Philly. But yeah, Brendan Lukens, singer, guitarist, Jake Ewald, guitarist, vocals, so the half uh, vocalist, Sean Huber on the drums, and Ian Farmer on the bass. Unfortunately, though, they've been on an indefinite hiatus since 2017, and who knows if they're coming back. Mm. You boys, <laughs> 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 your beers. Yeah. Uh, cool. yeah. 
Se- so you're going to miss it all. It's the second studio album released on the 11th of February 2014 by Run for Cover Records. Have not done a Run for Cover uh, album yet, but they're a, they're a sick record label. Sure there'll Tiger's be more Jaw. Come. Yeah, Tiger's Jaw, Title Fight, Citizen, Turnover, Basement, Pine Grove. All the lot Damn. have released albums with Run for Cover. I'm sure there'll be more. There will be more for sure. Um, yeah, so the album was written and recorded while they were attending college. And yes, yeah, so they were only about 21, 22 years old, which I did not know at the time how young they were until only a few mm. years ago. And it blew my mind. And once again, just made me upset. Uh, it was self-recorded <laughs> and self-produced. <laughs> so they, they produced this themselves and recorded themselves. I think Jake would have really? done the bulk of it. Same with yeah. sports as well, the really? first album. I knew it was for sports, but damn, they, they got good quick. Yeah, very good. Cool. one as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, but Holy Ghosts, after this, they had a producer for that one. Yeah. Um, from what I could find, I think there was only one official single, which was Your Graduation, which is the song that kind of made them as big as what they are now. Uh, but they also released music videos for Rock Bottom and Pothole, which was pretty random. Pothole, last track Yeah, weird. I wouldn't have thought Pothole mm. would get a... I had no idea about yeah. that. Have you watched the music video for Rock Bottom? Uh, I th- no, I don't think so. It's kind of like they're on a set Oh wait! Brendan's playing the acoustic guitar and they move. Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. Really Sorry, cool. That really cool one, uh, video. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, uh, and yeah, the album reached ninety-seven on the Billboard charts, which is pretty dope, and fifteen on oh. the US Alternative Album Charts, which is pretty cool. I think that they cracked the hundred. That's awesome. Smith Street Band, they didn't crack the hundred in America, but they did here. They are from Melbourne, Australia. Second Australian band, baby. Let's go. Uh, formed in 2010. Will Wagner, guitar vocalist. Lee Hartney, guitar. Michael Fitzgerald, bass. Chris Kerlband, drums. This was at the time of release. Now they also have Lucy Wilson and Jess Lock. Is it Jess Lock or Jess Lockie? I'm not sure. Lock? Low, low, I think yeah, it's Lock. Yeah. Hopefully just... Fuck, I hope I'm right. Uh, <laughs> who are also members now. But they, yeah, they do our guitars, vocals. They add a lot to that live band. Yeah, they do. When we... Sure. Remember, oh, yeah. when we uh, Saw him, Saw in, him a in a church. church. Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. We, play, we played in a, a scout's room and then they played in a church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the difference... The perfect show. I don't think there's ever been a bigger difference in stages I've ever seen. No. There was no... <laughs> so like, close to each no other. No chance yeah. in hell. It sucked Fun that, show. It sucked that we had to walk through the church first as well because you just see this massive, such an impressive stage. It's like, whoa, yeah. this is like the sickest thing ever. And then you go to a scout hall room <laughs> And you're like, ah, the worst stage we've ever played. On. We'll be here tonight. <laughs> to anyone uh, yes, who was in the band that's listening, it's like, yeah, you guys are gonna be headlining stage two. And we're like, all right, we'll headline stage two. Stage that's two is cool. a scouts hall. Like, yeah. too easy. <laughs> what would it rather be the Metal. opening band on the stage? But one, that I was believe. a sick show. It was. Sick. Any, to anyone that, that was, was there show. that's listening, the uh, what was it? Oh, it was the Supercars Newcastle yeah. 500. Yeah. Man, they were loud. That was the weirdest loud. gig. <laughs> that was the weirdest gig I've ever been to, let alone play. I reckon, just like yeah, the yeah. atmosphere oh. was very strange. So loud. Well, the Smith Street Band were playing. That was hectic. Yeah, was so good. But yeah, like up so until good. then, because the cars just kept coming. I didn't realize how late it went. <laughs> the cars didn't stop. They wouldn't baby. stop, and you just like you would walk into the big room, which I mean, it's a church, so it's not really meant for amplification, and then. So it's just blaring in there and you're like, okay, geez, it's loud without many people in here. Go outside. And then you just cop in the, the cars. <laughs> like, mm. Absolutely. I reckon my ears... And are... getting in there was an absolute journey as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, Anywho. Mrs. St. Clair was... She was on the brink. <laughs> yeah. Another, hard, yeah. another hard trip in. Yeah. We were asking too many questions of, uh, <laughs> of that. Uh, that's funny. Uh, anyway. Throw Me in the River is their third studio album was released on Halloween 2014, October 31 by Poison City Records. There's another very cool record Ooh. label. They've released albums by Luca Brasi, The Bennies, Clowns, Camp Cope. Uh, it was produced by Jeff Rosenstock, which is very cool. American know. singer-songwriter. He also produced their album after this, More Scared of You Than You Are of Me. Um, I like... I really like the production on this album. I too. think he, kind of, he has a massive influence. Have, have you guys ever yeah. listened to some of his stuff? Not enough Not to properly, be able to no. talk about it. It's pretty like, but. it's the same. It's just like a, such a big wall of, for, for like emo music, which is usually like, like Mobo, I guess. It's kind of a little bit, I don't want to say like, it's not worse, but just doesn't sound like a big arena rock band. 
Just not as large. But yeah, yeah this bat. I wouldn't say Mobo because this you're gonna miss it all. It's pretty fat too. Yeah, uh, not in the same way though. No, not, not as not, epic and grand. Not, uh, not yeah. as grand. Yeah, yeah. Mystery yeah. Band um, sounds so big. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Both albums were mixed by the same dude, actually, Jonathan Lowe. He's a Philly-based engineer. So he released "Throw Me in the River" and "You're Gonna Miss It All." Uh, yeah. Same thing with Mo- Mobo. I couldn't really find if they had any official singles after it, but, but "Surrender," the thir- uh, the second track on the album, was the first uh, single. I'm pretty sure "I Don't Want to Die." I don't want to die anymore. Was another single, but and "Throw Me in the River" but, wasn't it? Yeah, it's hard to find because they it, these smaller bands. It w- I have to do some digging. It's kind of hard. Well, I mean, also that that album was so big on Triple J. I feel like mm. every song on that album was getting oh, a spin. Yeah. yeah, they played a lot. So I couldn't tell you which one was the actual. So many of them were <laughs> yeah played to death on mm. Triple J, for sure. Mm. Yeah. And it reached number eighteen on the Aria charts, which is pretty cool because they weren't massive at the time. But after this album, it, mm. um, they, they skyrocketed mm. here anyway. Massive. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's all I Absolutely. got. Shall we get into... The Elements. Yes, Let's talk about how fat yeah. the Smith Street Band album oh. is. <laughs> big one. I Don't Want to Die Anymore, the bridge. Yeah. Where it's the big drop D. It's like... Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So, yeah like, if you just took that up. part out, that's a metal song. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's it's a lot so of that. <laughs> Even, like, like Throw it. Me in the River. Just, like, they're really good at... I think the Smith Street Band are really good at contrasting. Like, they do that heaps where they go... Um, They'll go like a part of it'll be super quiet, and then they just build it up to absolute explosions on like mm. every track. Really, <laughs> there's always a, yeah, there's always they, a point like that. Well, they definitely yeah. don't follow like generic s- structure, not structures, but like they just twist between like sections within sections. Um, Get high, see no one was one of my new ones that I was like, whoa, I haven't even I've like this wasn't recognizable before, but. That was been probably one of my favorites coming back this this week. Mm. Sure, I actually wrote down what I thought like most of their structures were. Not all of them, but it was like first verse, mm. then a massive chorus, then like a drop out in the second verse, yeah, and a build up, and another drop out, and then some heavy bit, yeah, <laughs> just comes in, yeah, which like I love. It's whack, <laughs> but it's kind of similar in all of them. Yeah, it is. Yeah, mm. definitely, which is really cool though. <laughs> I like it, and like the the I I just completely forgot how big some of them were i didn't realize how much they played in drop d as well mm. which just makes it so fat mm. which is awesome <laughs> the big um yeah their guitars are crazy the end of uh the arrogance of the drunk pedestrian just that bass it's like drops off heaps oh, yeah. like the same thing again but then the the bass like obviously just hits the distortion and it's just like this huge line that's, mm. that's, yeah so uh, yeah. i think that's that's probably like a little sneak preview to what my fattest roof is, but that's <laughs> definitely the, my favorite part. Into the I fray. Think. Yeah. yeah, gets me every time. The arrogance of a drunk protest. They kind of that's crazy. Mastered the formula in a way mm. in it for like Australian rock radio. Yeah, like especially in mm. five years ago. Even now, so many so many bands are still influenced by, especially singers. They hear Will mm. Wagner and they're like, "Oh, I could probably give this a go." Like he's not really he's not he's not like a technically um profound singer. Yeah, but I, I think the thing was like there's so many punk bands from America for ages that aren't actually good singers. Like pretty all of them. Yeah. But they just sing in their American accent. The same way like if Will Wagner was born in America, he would sound the same as like modern baseball basically. Like they're not amazing <laughs> singers. But it's just yeah. like it's just no one ever did it here in their actual accent. Yeah. So I think yeah, when people saw sure. that, they're like, "Oh, it's acceptable." <laughs> I could, I can I be he's a the highlight. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's the highlight of the album for me. Like his his performance. Oh yeah, his and he's, he's his album. lyrics as well. He's so like. Yeah. Oh you can, yeah. Um, Such a good storyteller. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think his his dad was a poet or something. I think he can kind really? of like he's very um. I don't know. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, very kind of not profound, but like uh, there's a lot of imagery. In his, in his songs Yeah, absolutely yeah. Both it's bands like are pretty super, similar in that super way honest. Yeah, definitely um, yeah. They're, they're Quite n- literal Their vocal range isn't, you know, Ariana Grande But no. they're super, super powerful <laughs> yeah. in their lyrics Yeah like Absolutely The modern baseball say, yeah. lyrics the, mm. if you, There's some lyrics if you heard for the first time Some songs, you'd be like Who's this band? Get him off Go, Okay, I, I wrote one down <laughs> From going to bed now, if you're going to miss it all 
What do you call someone who calls you out on DIY ethics you don't embody as he drains his dad and mummy's monthly data plan? An <laughs> asshole with an iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> so, but when you know the band and when you know, you know what those what albums are, and you get into it, and you're like, yes, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I think they're yeah. both kind of equal lyrically. I'd say. I I, I like sure. the, the lyrics a lot on modern baseballs as well. Um, yeah. I think I I think I actually prefer um, Holy Ghost for lyrics. Right. Out of okay. Mobo's discography, but um, but I that this one's really good as well. I think. Yeah. Mm. This one's like just it's super fun yeah, as well for sure. I think. Yeah. Like that's his it's his best attribute I would yeah. say. Um, and I think I always think like people had. Like they had their My Chemical Romances and Blink and like Fallout Boy back in the day, and we had Mobo and Pup and Basement, Luca Brasi and oh, stuff. Yeah. Like so, this is my this is my punk, and that's why I have like such a strong connection to it because this is what I grew up mm. not grew up, but like in our later teens, this is we were just pumping this for like two years straight. I didn't really get into Mobo until I joined the band. I was I was yeah. into Smith Street Band. I wasn't actually into Smith Street Band much at all until. I was at Reading and they played at Reading and I just stumbled mm. across them and I was, the people I was, well, Rani, who you guys both know, shout out, fan of the pod, I'm sure. She woo, was a big woo, fan. Woo. So we went and saw him and they had a massive crowd, even though it was in England, but they like filled out the tent and really? awesome. probably all Go Australians. On. There's a lot of Australians there, but, but um, yeah. yeah, he was just so ener- like energetic, but also like he cried. <laughs> on stage he just sort of gave it all and yeah, yeah. so I, yeah that, and that was That's this it. album as well so yeah i definitely kind of this got me into this sort of music as well for sure yeah right. both bands wear their hearts on their sleeve big yeah time. yeah oh, for sure absolutely. that's like the biggest similarity mm. mobo i mean neither bands are pop punk but modern bass for a, a pop punk band but instead of kind of whining about the things in their life that don't go their way they whine about they don't know they don't know why they describe why it doesn't go their way like they're yeah. they talking about their insecurities and their shyness and their mental health yeah well. i'd say they're a little oh, less yeah like less vain than a lot of pop punk bands and they're just Absolutely. super normal i think like they're just full blow like they've definitely just did what they want and and people relate to it yeah least. i like definitely think mm. that i relate to this album more than uh, you're gonna uh, more than throw him in the river. Yeah, but same, I feel like probably, yeah. three or four years from now, who knows? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Might be completely yeah. different. You know what I mean? I feel like this is for like a like a mid twenties, even though I'm in the mid twenties, like a mid mid to late twenties yeah. sort of person. But it no, feels definitely. like they should have been way more older when they wrote this, but they're only twenty one. That's why. That's why I don't know. I I did not not even consciously, but that could have been why I was so attracted to it oh, when I was a bit younger. Do you reckon for Mobo? Yeah, I, I kind of think that for me that was more. Um, it reminded me more of like my eighteen, nineteen year old years. I like related mm. a lot back to it. Um, more mm. than like it, pretty stark comparison from doing the Blink episode a couple weeks back, mm. where I just didn't get a lot of the. It was just too like a lot of the teenage cliches were too, just like American movies, but I didn't actually <laughs> relate to them. Whereas a lot of the stuff on here, this I, is I more think, up your alley. yeah, seemed a lot more real yeah, to me sure. as far as like your, your, I guess your formative years <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when mm-hmm. you start going for to parties sure. and stuff. Sure. Yeah. I think Growing up. You can, for you sure. can tell if you've listened to Modern Baseball three albums, you can tell where they wanted to go, but, or we're well, not mm. where they wanted to go, but where they were heading. And I think you can tell that on this album, but I still don't think they completely knew or decided where they wanted their sound to go. Cause there's a, there's a few there's a lot of different kind of questionable, not questionable, but genre <laughs> I, mix-ups. I would agree with that for sure. Um, yeah. Like they, 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 the, the first maybe four tracks are full upbeat kind of borderline pop punk songs. You can't even call them pop punk though because when you listen to the vocals, but if you take the vocals out, it's just pop punk. And then they got like it's indie, emo, folk, yeah. borderline country in there, acoustic, <laughs> which I, for me personally, I, it adds to it because it gives me that charm. Mm. But from like a subjective level, it's definitely... I remember back in the day... It used to like piss me off a little bit. Not piss me off, but I didn't like it as much. But notes and like pothole and um, going to bed now. Going to bed now. Yeah, those are like going to bed now is maybe like my sleeper pick as yeah. my favorite song this time around. True. Yeah, so I really enjoyed that. But I reckon if you listen to this for the first time, you'd be a bit confused. 
Oh, absolutely. By where they were going. Oh, it's for a certain person as well. It's definitely for us. Like, like I don't know. No, nerds. I know what you mean. I know <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this album's definitely like, it's not for everyone. No. For and sure. neither is Throw Me in the River, I don't think. Yeah. There's a lot of people, especially, I hear people all the time say, I can't stand Will Wagner's voice. I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> You'll be right. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think you just got to get used to it. But I, I think it that's also just because we're not, we're not used to Australian voices. It's the same with like um, Courtney Barnett. Like mm. for some, like mm. America and England loved her, but in Australia, like I know a lot of people would kind of like in our friend group anyway, would just be like, "Oh no, I hate her voice, Alex, so bogan." But it's like <laughs> that's what we sound that's like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. We said it's, this last week. It's just because the, the Aussie bogan is alive and well. Yeah, we're we're just not we're not <laughs> used to it. So when we hear it, I think we get a little bit embarrassed, uh, kind of. Because you know that it's out in the big bad world, and you don't want everyone to know what we sound like. But, but I, yeah, I think in years to come, when people get more used to it, I don't think they'll look back on it that way. No, yeah. I don't either. Yeah, and you can't. The music is so appealing. If you like rock music, you're gonna like Smith Street Band. And if you are in Australia, and <laughs> if you like the Smith Street Band, you're gonna like modern baseball. Exactly. Yeah, and and vice versa. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Like well, you're you're lying anyway. if you say you don't like exactly. one of these bands if you like the other. I feel like this album's also like a it's a it's like a rock and roll album at the same it is, time. Yeah, I know people who love like Paul Kelly for instance, and then like really love the Smith Street Band as well. Yeah. It's more of that sort of storytelling rock yeah. and roll classic. The pub pub girl rock chisel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's kind of an evolution of that. I'd say I'm gonna say it. Yeah, no, it. it is. I and I think they, I think they almost went for that as well. But they the, did. Remember when they did the? They got on the bus and down Melbourne, like ACDC did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is like it is kind of like that. But at the same time, if you look on like, have you guys ever watched? Um, I think it's called Little Elephant or whatever. It's like a, it's kind of like Audio Tree in America, but it's just all those okay. emo bands, which is the same as Audio Tree, but it's just another one of them. <laughs> and they were on that, okay. and they were on a few other like emo American things. So like to them. They're just like that's an emo band. <laughs> like yeah. when oh, yeah. Fantano did a review of their third album or whatever, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah. this is Australian emo," <laughs> but I don't think that we would say is. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think Australians I would, would say it's pub rock. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Should we get into the segments? Yeah, yeah for sure. Let's have yes, a sir. Ideas. Let's do it. First up, get, 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 get it. <laughs> alrighty. Let's make some tattoo ideas, tattoo designs from these two albums um i'll go first i'll go first i'll kick it off mine from modern baseball is from the song rock bottom so the line is Mm -hmm. there's no good reason why i should leave your bed tomorrow we can watch planet earth and brainstorm tattoos so the tattoo see i was gonna go for this but like this is i thought this was too easy no Uh, let's see where you're going let's see where you're going do you reckon i could finish is that all good (laughs) Uh, (laughs) no Alrighty. thanks for that so the tattoo is an homage to that line, but also the whole song. So along the arm, there'd be a few different tattoos to represent this song. So pizza with aspirin, because uh, from the mm-hmm. earlier in the song, he says he needs uh, aspirin and pizza, couldn't even help his hangover. Uh, a coffee cup filled with garlic. Uh, the words, whatever, forever, the classic line mm-hmm. from this song. And a tattoo of the planet Earth for brain. Uh, we can watch planet Earth together. So there's four tattoos in one just along the arm there. So a little, uh, what's a little montage of that's nice. A little montage of rock bottom from the I like uh, it. yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. And then uh, mine s- was wait up. I'll oh, do my Swiss Street thing if that's all good, mate. Uh, <laughs> Swiss Street band. Sorry, mate. <laughs> from Get High, See No One. Um, it's so uh, the line is it's one a.m. here. It's even later where I'm from. Alcohol and time differences. Time differences. They never got along. So on your wrist where you would put a watch. It's like in the shape of a watch, but it's the it, it says whatever your favorite whatever your favorite beverage is. So it could be a VB logo on a watch, <laughs> uh, vodka cruises, Bacardi Oak and Coke, <laughs> Dewey's new, you name it, and you got be... that tattooed as a watch. Oh dear, that's one of the like in like in practicality. That's one of the worst tattoos. <laughs> if I saw that in real life, I'd be like, Yeah, are you serious? I don't think that's any of these are though. practically ever. <laughs> <Very good though. laughs> in a practical sense yeah. 
Uh, I'll go with mine. Mine this is just as bad. Okay, so you in um, is it in Broken Cash Machine? He's like, oh, why did I do that? If you ever get a really bad tat that you don't like, <laughs> you write that underneath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did I do that? That's decent. <laughs> so, uh, moving on, moving on. Um, uh, off. I don't want to die anymore. I was wrapped up in my doona, wrapped in my own head. I was just thinking like a brain. Like a cartoon brain that's using, it's like a, it's using a doona as like a dressing gown or like just like a headpiece, <laughs> so it's keeping warm. Or That'd like, be yeah. nice. I like Not it. Not too great. No, that's good. Anyway, good. mine are mine are equally pretty average this week as they always are. Um, my one for <laughs> Mobo, just because I think it's the most iconic part of the album and everyone knows it. Um, it's the drummer Sean's verse in mm-hmm. uh, Your Graduation, as like a Bible yeah. passage. <laughs> So it says Sean in Mobobians first one, and then just uh, nice. the whole you, oh, you know the words nice cursive and yeah, down nice down the rib cage. I, I can barely read it. Lance. Yeah, um, That's and then for nice. Smith Street Band, this one uh, is really sorry for anyone that gets offended by this one. It's kind of a little bit offensive, but it's uh, from Uh-oh. Get High See No One. It's just uh, Stevie Wonder smoking a blunt. <laughs> He's getting high and he's saying no one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! So, sorry about that. That's, I like that's it. pretty I bad. Like it. <laughs> sorry for any uh, any blind blind listeners out there. <laughs> but uh, there you go. That is crazy. <laughs> You're mad, man. Pretty shocking. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh it was all I could Nothing better. Is that all you got? Yeah, that's okay, it. fair enough. No, that's good. That's, that's good. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're ditching this. A yeah, moment a of silence. Should be right. It's good to go. <laughs> right. Yeah, nice. All right, fattest. Griff. <laughs> we got to recover. Let's go. Yeah, we that. do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shit, you've completely... You've, you've, I'll go, I'll go. I'll back you up. You stumped right. me. You stumped fattest me after riff. that tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> fattest riff. Favourite or the fattest part of the I'm album sorry. that goes hardest. Brad, you just keep it off. All right. I've got the when the bass and the drums come in off the old gospel choir for Mobo. Oh yeah, uh, it's like down, 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 down. It's like there's a tombstone in the what is it? There's a tombstone in the brush with my name on the front. That bit when everyone comes in. Yeah, I love that's that. maybe my favorite. Yeah, favorite moment on the album, and it's heaps fun to play live as well. So uh, for throw me in the river, I had just like the bridge in Surrey Drive where he's like, so why? Don't you fuck oh, off? Oh yeah, <laughs> and it just comes straight back in. So like, the audacity to just put that in a song, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Why the you audacity? Fuck yell that, nothing else. But yeah, 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 sick. Uh, mine for modern bass Hall was also from the old gospel choir, but it's just after the pause where he's like, "Now I'm dead to me." Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's <laughs> that. that I love it. that song. It's just epic, and then. Yeah, I had a few from Smith Street, Bridge for My I Don't Want to Die Anymore, Outro of I Love Life, but I think I'm just going to go with the intro of Surrey Drive as well, Brad. Now, like, yeah, two songs. I was going to have that. Like the yeah. drums, the boo 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 The guitar in that is heaps rememberable as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Always get that stuck in my head. Adam? Yeah. Uh, mine for Mobo was just the end of Fine Great, because I think it's a good opener and it mm-hmm. sort of build as it builds up, because it kind of it has like the a, harmonies in that a first well. build up and it's kind of underwhelming. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, okay, I thought it was going to go a bit a bit harder than that. <laughs> and then it, it stays at that level and then it goes up to the notch that you were you were yeah. chasing earlier. <laughs> as that big drum fill yeah, in as well. it's very it's satisfying. Like, do, 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 do. Um, and then for Smith Street, I had, I already mentioned it, but yeah, it was right at the end of the Arrogance of the Drunk Pedestrian. has a big, big bass, like hitting, hitting 11. And, uh, <laughs> and then it kicks off from there. So nice. there you go. Awesome. Very nice. All right. The ad. What couple of songs are going into our Spotify playlist, which you can find, called the Record Royale, uh, Record Royale Ads. Our favorite songs from each album we've covered. Um, Adam, you kick it off. Um, for, okay, for Mobo, I had, I just had Rock Bottom, just even though it's like the, yeah. one of the big singles, but um, that's Nothing definitely my that. favorite. It's got to be in there. Favorite track. I believe. Yeah, yeah, I feel like as a representative of the, the album, it's got to be in there. Yeah. Um, and then for Smith Street, I actually had East London Summer. Um, oh, I yeah. always go back to that track. 
for some reason. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah. Again, it's I just you like, like that track, eh? You don't like it? Yeah, I don't know. It was something about when I when I kept listening to it, I was like, mm. I, it could have just been the structure. It just kind of caught me off guard. Yeah, I, kind of, I don't like know. the way, not the song, like the 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 vocal structure. It's it's weird on that song, which is cool, yeah. but it, it it was weird. Yeah, it's just got yes. a it's got a lot of um, a lot of aggression, really. <laughs> I yeah. think like parts of that are he's most aggressive in the album. So yeah, there you go. Nice. Sweet, Brad, what were yours? Um, I had, I had, I don't want to die anymore. Obviously, off Throw Me in the River. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that is that was my favorite song when I first listened to this album, and it still is today. Yeah, for sure, it, the whole thing is such a such a ride. And I had, can we put two songs in? Because I had Charlie Back and the Timmy Bales together, but I guess we can't because eh? they can't. You can't have one without the other. Do you want so to put one in? Someone else. You put one in. No, but they have to get. You can't you have. Can't have yeah. You gotta have the outro as well. Yeah, yeah. And like, if people shuffle in this this uh, playlist, that will not work as well at all. So I'll do. I'll do fine. I'll do fine. Great. Yep, another classic. Just no words needed. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's a. It's, it's a so very good. good opener. It's a. It's a weird opener, but in terms of the album, mm-hmm. it's a brilliant opener. Yeah. Um. Mine for Modern Baseball was Two Good Things. I love that song. I've always loved that one. I yeah. love the guitar line on it. I think it's a, it's an underappreciated Modern Baseball song. Yeah. It, uh, it is, it's great though. Absolutely. I do love that track. Yeah. It, it, it gets really fat as well when it all kicks in. It's got that... Yeah. Um, and for Smith Street Band, I said it before, but it's Surrey Drive. Opening drum fill. It's yeah. got a really good pace, that song. Really good pace and really good energy. It's sick. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, follow that Sweet. playlist on Spotify. The Record Royale ads. You know what it's time for? Two truths and a lie. Yeah, Woo. baby. I'm up this week. <laughs> I'm excited. I am I hope this goes as well as what I did in my head. <laughs> but it could be right. kind of shit. All right, so. Okay. I got three, three statements. So what you're going to have to do this week is pick... Which one is not a Modern Baseball or Smith Street Band lyric? So, the two that are true, they're not off these two albums because just in case they were all stuck in your head. So, they're off different albums yeah. by these bands. One of them, yeah. I made up myself. Okay, so, which one is not the real lyric from one of these bands? So, this is number one. When we laid so ever so still for a solitude moment under the lights against our will, I wanted to leave and get out while we still had the time, if only we still had the time. Number two. If I could remember the name of everyone I'd kissed, does that mean they'd remember mine? Was there something in that bliss? Such a beautiful waste of time. Number three, you've got two clinging to this town that you supposedly hate. And though it kills me to say, if you get stuck, then I'm just going to leave. All right, Oof. which one did I make up? Damn. Okay, I'll go first. Both these bands use the word town a lot. Yeah, they do. And I know that Will is aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking he might have chucked the town lyric in there. Yeah. Just to throw us off guard. Because that one like automatically sounds pretty real. Mm. But that might be the point. <laughs> Maybe. Let's you get the first one, one again. Let's get the first one again. Yeah, that yeah. sounded can, pretty generic. Can you read the first one, please? Yeah, for sure. Uh, when we laid so ever so still for a solitude moment under the lights against our will, I wanted to leave and get out while we still had the time. If only we still had the time. Mm-hmm. That's Actually, that sounds like a Smith Street. Yeah, lyric. it's pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. If, you don't think one. I could write? I don't, that I don't reckon Will's got it in him. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, I'm not a known uh, lyricist. Ah, uh, no, no, that's okay. nothing wrong with that. Uh, but let's hear the second one. Yeah, number um, two. If I could remember the name of everyone I'd kissed, does that mean they'd remember mine? Was there something in that bliss? Such a beautiful waste of time. Hmm, that's a bit fishy. That one. <laughs> I reckon the third one I'm is thinking, the lie. I'm gonna go with number okay. Trey. I'll go that one then because I don't know. That sounded a bit corny. So Brad, you're going with that one. It's read out, and Adam, you're going yeah. with you've got too clingy to this town. You supposedly hate, and though it kills me to say, if you get stuck, then I'm just gonna leave. Yeah. I got you both. I made up number one. Oh, oh. a poet. Yep, you're a poet. Yo. I'm a poet. When we laid ever so still for a solitude moment. Under the lights against our will. Wow. Whoa. I wanted to leave and get out while we still had the time. If only we still had the time. 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. it yeah, is. so number two. Well played. Was, number two was from Young Once, of uh, Smith Street Band, off mm-hmm. the album after this. And number three was from See You Sucker by Mobo on Sports. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. From this town that you suppose it. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> I know that one, actually. Yes. Damn, well played. That was good, brother. Bro. Thank you. I'm honestly very chuffed with that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be sleeping well tonight. Buddy. Yeah, I'm good feeling idea. good. Let's uh, let's rate these <laughs> albums, all right? Yeah, let's uh, go. Adam, you're going first. Uh, what one are we going? What do you reckon? We go. Uh, do Mobo first. Mobo. Um, I'm gonna give this an eight. I think it's a really solid. Oh, what are we doing? What are the what are the values? Oh yeah, what are the values? Oh for? shit, I didn't think of something. Um, oh. I'm thinking it right now. <laughs> Modern right, baseball. Uh, we're doing. We're doing. <sighs> There's so many good ones I could have done, and I didn't. There's even so look. many good ones. That's all right. Let's just do something average. Let's do Timmy Bowers <laughs> <laughs> out of ten. That's Timmy Bowers and Smith Street will do. Um, <laughs> ten Timmy Bowers. We'll do um, locations on the map because they speak a lot about <laughs> places. Yeah, just Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Locations so, on the map. <laughs> <laughs> any map you want, it doesn't okay. matter. No worries. But uh, Mobo, yeah, out of t- out of ten, Timmy Bowers. Um, yeah, eight, eight Timmy Bowers. True, you already said <laughs> it. I already said it. But um, yeah, it's, it's super solid, I think. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it's a great album. I don't think it's reinventing the wheel or anything. Um, but it's a very solid emo album. But yeah, there you go. It, it's not higher. Not much to it. Just yeah. because I don't think it's like a... It's not changing the course of music or anything. But, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, there you go. Cool. I'm also going to give it eight Timmy Bowers out of ten Timmy Bowers. You know, Righto. I said it before, but this album, this band's kind of entire discography, it holds a special place in my heart and a lot of my friend's heart. For the reason being, we pumped Modern Baseball for about a year and a half straight. And it just, it, it brings so much good joy to me. And even if I took the nostalgia goggles off, listening to this album, it just does that as well. It's just a fun, mm-hmm. fun album. And uh, yeah, but as you said, Adam, it's nothing crazy, so it's mm. not going to get higher. If you told me this, rank this, April 2016, it's an 11. Yeah. But uh, yeah, eight Timmy Bowers. Yeah. Thanks very much. Damn. Bradley. Right. right. Okay. Let's see to you dogging the boys like that. I'll give it a nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it a nine. Like this, nine Timmy Bowers, because this album is just like the crowning jewel of that period for me like there's other albums as well but this is this is the one out of all of them i think just because yeah all our friends really like it it's like heaps relatable and like catchy and awkward at the same time mm, and word. this is like my if i had to take two punk albums to the bahamas and that's that's all we're going i'll take this i'll take this for sure so yeah i'll take that nine nice. timmy bells Cool. All right, Adam, how many <laughs> locations on the map for Throw Me in the River by the Smith Street Band? Uh, I'm going to give this uh, nine locations on the map. Um, oh, sure. Just because it, well, it's the same reason as Brad's. Just because it, it did have a, it was a bit of a turning point for me, I think, um, for what I was listening to. Also, just because it's good to see a bogan sounding bigger guy with a ranger beard <laughs> that pretty similar attributes to myself. It. Playing up on a stage, nice. so I was, yeah. Uh, this album meant a lot Ten. to me at the time. Yeah, nine. Nice. Cool. I'm gonna give it. I think, I think I have underrated and underappreciated this album a lot the past few years. But coming back, it goes very hard, very hard, and it's very nostalgic as well. Even though I have no connection to it, <laughs> or big connection to it. Yeah. I think it's just due to Will Wagner's kind of execution of his singing. I'm going to give it an eight as well. I don't think I could split the two during the week. I, I enjoyed listening to both of them just okay. as much. And I found, I picked up on things in both the albums that were about the same. So, yep. Eight locations on Damn. the map. Damn. All right. I think we might have a tie here, boys. Wowza. Because I was going to go an eight as well. I just think, yeah, it's like, it's just like a more dramatic, not dramatic, like refined and more mature version of Mobo. I yeah. think. And an Australian version of that as well. And it'll be, I feel like I'll, it'll become even more relevant as I get older. So I'm going to give it 
eight locales, but it seems we have a tie. We do have a tie, 25 a piece, but you know what that means when we have a tie, we pick the album that both of us favoured more to the other one. And yeah, Adam favoured the Smith Street Band, but me and Brad both favoured Mobo. Oh, right. No, I gave it a tie, I gave it an eight. I gave yeah. both the albums you, an bro. eight. It's up to you, bro. It's up to you. Oh, man, it's up to, it's up to me. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'm going to go with Modern Baseball. Is the Modern Baseball, yeah. you're going to miss it all. Bye. Bye, a whisker. <laughs> Bye, a whisker. <laughs> I think in terms of a matchup, this is one of the best yet. Because they're not, you wouldn't, mm. they're not, you know, they haven't, they're not best mates. They're not from the same city. But in terms of music, influence, um, you know, not legacy, but kind of for Modern Baseball because I haven't played a show in three years. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to give it, you're going to miss it all just in maybe the yeah. closest yet. Nice. Buy a hair. <laughs> Buy a whisker. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. Yeah, you're going to miss it all. I'm cool with that. Baseball gets the, I'm cool with that. the dub. The big W. The big fat W. That's it. That's it. Decent. Uh, How do you feel? Adam's been a bit quiet over there. <laughs> no, no, good? I'm, I'm good. good. Buddy? I'm good. <laughs> all right. That's all right. Right here. We won't hear from him in a, in a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, oh, I highly geez. recommend to everyone listening, go listen to those two albums. Esp- mm. Especially... Don't listen to them in your bed um, on, at 11 p.m. on a Friday night. Listen yeah. to them when you're on the beers <laughs> with your mates yeah. at 11 p.m. on a Saturday ride. night. <laughs> but uh, yeah, very, very, Lovely. very good. Um, next week on the show is going to be very enjoyable. we got Bray Fisher, absolute legend from Sydney rock band Dear Seattle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's right. Next week, we got Bray on the show. Bloody so yes. keen. And he has chosen two albums that I've never listened to, but I've always wanted to. I always think, yeah, I'll get around to listening to those albums, but I never have. But now I got to. Radiohead and their album, The Bends, and Coldplay with their debut album, Parachutes. Pretty Damn. random, and I'm really I'm keen. keen. <laughs> like, I'm keen to hear what he says. Yeah, I'm really keen to see why, why he chose these two. I guess there's a lot of acoustics and pianos in both, I think. I don't really know they the Coldplay are... album, but The Bends does. Oh, no, yeah. For Pretty sure. similar. Yeah. But I'm really keen to listen to it. It's going to be different though because I've been pumping these albums at the gym and you can't yeah. pump Coldplay and Radiohead, these two albums at the gym. Nah, they, they're, these hey, are you don't know ballads. that. You don't know that yet. <laughs> <laughs> that could be like the infinite rep playlist. If you, you want know? to have a cry through the week, listen to the bands yeah. and you will. <laughs> yeah, so it should be It'll help. It should be... Yeah, it should be really fun. Episode 15, yeah, next week. Yeah. Thanks for checking in. Woo. Another rep. Hey, we hope to all our Victorian listeners that you're uh, doing well <laughs> down there in lockdown. I'm pretty scared that we're going to yeah. go into lockdown again. Um, that would I pump. I think I've spread it up the up to the coast, unfortunately, <laughs> my, from my the roommates, blues. My roommate's stuck down there. Whoa, really? At the moment. really? Yeah, he took that. He did a delivery job down there. Um which it was cool. kind of flaring up at the time, but I think him and his boss were like, ah, should be right. And now they're, yeah, they're kind of stuck. How's he doing? Is he doing all right? Or is yeah, he yeah, he's trapped. Right. He, he doesn't have got a his phone. But, um, he's got his phone wallet. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all you need. <laughs> phone wallet keys. <laughs> right. uh, phone should wallet be right keys. then. Yeah. No, yeah. I think oh, it's fine. Heavy. Yeah, there you go. go. Hope everyone's doing all right wherever you are. Um, yeah, cool. Let us know what albums you want to do. Get in touch with us on the socials. Record Royale. Um, drop us a five star rating and a review uh, yeah let us know what albums we want to do we want to hear we want to hear uh, cool 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 let's leave it there please go listen to you're going to miss it all and throw me in the river very 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 much recommend these two uh, yeah sick it's a Thursday night when we're recording I'm going to go watch the footy see you boys <laughs> <laughs> see you, see you later bye, bye. bye.